this is going to be a big one. So before we even get into it, if you're a man watching this and you're married, grab your wife right now. Okay. If you're a woman watching this and you're married, go grab your husband so y'all can watch this together because this one right here is going to bless you guys. If you ain't married yet and you still on the single train riding that single bus, you better ride it well. Keep in mind, still take notes because this is going to help you even uh, um, though you're single, when you get married, you can implement this, okay? So do me a favor, pause the video, grab your partner, and y'all come back and watch the rest. Let's get into it. Welcome, welcome to the Men of Impact podcast. I'm your boy, LAC. I'm happy you guys are here with me. So today, we're going to be talking about the fact that, okay, y'all walk down the aisle together, okay? You said I do to each other. You guys love each other. You have fun together. You do all cool things together. But some way, somehow, along the path of you guys being married, y'all stopped being intimate. There's no sexual tension. There's no excitement in that area sexually. So what happened? Now, a lot of things can play into that. I'm not an expert. I've been married going on four years. However, one thing that I will tell you is, you know, you're going to have one person that has a higher sex drive than the other. And sometimes it fluctuates. Sometimes the, the husband will have a higher sex drive. Sometimes the, the wife will have a higher sex drive. And sometimes it's just normal. You guys have the same sex drive and it's and it works perfectly. But what happens and what should you do when you don't desire to have sex? It's not that you don't love your, your spouse. It's not like you don't love your, your husband or you don't love your wife. Because let's be honest, just because you don't want to have sex does not mean you don't love your partner. You can love your partner and just not feel the need to want to be intimate. And okay, all right. But even in that, what should you do when you feel that way? First things first. Y'all say first things first. First things first, I'm going to tell you guys what the Bible says. Listen, I can give you my opinion. I can tell you from, 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 from New York to Albuquerque. I can tell you from A to Z, yo, this is what you need to do. I can tell you, go read this book. I can tell you, go do this. I can tell you what the world tells you. Oh, maybe you guys should have some shrimp or some lobster or, or some oysters because it's an aphrodisiac. And, and or go outside in the sun because the sun is a natural aphrodisiac and therefore it can turn it on. Maybe, you know, the world will tell you, try to do some, some texting and all this stuff, right? Try texting and insinuating, you know, that sexual energy. Listen, listen, all those things are cool, right? but, but, but what I'm going to tell you first, the first thing I'm going to tell you is as a Christ-centered believer, listen, as a Christ-centered believer, I'm speaking to you as a Christ-centered believer. So if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you don't got to listen to me. All I'm telling you is get to know him. That's all I'm telling you because you have the best life you've ever had. I'm going to tell you what Jesus says. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, okay? And by telling you what the Bible says, then we can begin to uncover some things, all right? And then we can go from there. So what does the Bible say when it comes to you want to have sex or you don't want to have sex? What does the Bible say? Let's turn to the book of First Corinthians, all right? I'm, I, I got my Bible with me. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? The Bible, the word, the, the, the breath of God. Um, I love me the Bible. So let's read what 1 Corinthians says. And this is Paul, okay? And he gives us the principles of marriage in chapter 7. I'm going to read, start from verse 1. It says, Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife. And let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So y'all heard what the Bible says, okay? You as the husband, your body does not belong to you. You as a wife, your body does not belong to you. The thing is, your body belongs to each other. The moment you become married, it's no longer about me, 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 or I, I, I. It's now about us. 
It's, not, it's now about we. It's now about them, okay? So you are serving them. So that means my body is not mine. Of course, it's my body, but it belongs to my wife also. Just like your body is not yours, but it belongs to your husband. So that's what you have to understand. And when you understand that, you can realize, okay, although I may not want to have sex, Paul says, right, you don't want to give room to Satan to come in and manipulate or even cause y'all to lose interest in each other. Because what is sex? Sex is intimacy, okay? Now, I don't have all the answers. Listen to me. Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt and go read the Bible on your own. I don't have all the answers. Go talk to people who've been married for 40, 50, 30 years, even 20 years or 15 years, and, and, and ask them. Talk to them, okay? Get some godly wisdom from those people as well. I've been married going on four years. I can tell you what has worked for me, but there are people who've been married for 15 plus years who can tell you also what has worked for them. But the number one thing I want you to understand is when you look at things from the scripture, it helps you to live a better life. So when Paul says, listen, this is what Paul says. Your body is not yours. It belongs to your partner. It belongs to your wife. It belongs to your husband. It's no longer yours. And do not deprive one another. You know what that means? When she wants to be intimate, don't say, I don't want to be intimate. Oh, I don't want to have sex. I'm tired. No, get off your butt. Get in the mood and prioritize your spouse. Because it's a sin if you cause, if you deprive them because you are in con complete disobedience to the word of the Lord. And what you're doing is you're allowing Satan to come into your marriage, into your home, and, and, and begin to mess things around. Because there are people, now I'm not saying this is right, but you denying your partner could cause them to want to look at other people. You saying no to your husband may cause him to want to go look at an, uh, uh, another woman. You saying no to your wife may cause her to want to have an emotional connection with another man at work because you're not fulfilling your duty as a husband. So do not deny her. And then going back to the other things is get childlike again. Get playful again. Flirt with her one more time. You know what I'm saying? Do spontaneous things again. Buy her clothes that are sensual. That shows her curves. Stop being so holy and so tight. You know what I'm saying? Acting like you're so perfect. Bro, you know. You're, you know you're not perfect. You know you're not perfect. You know how you was back in the day when you were in your flesh. You know how you was. Why is it that now that you're married, you got to be so tight and it's like you always got a suit on? Bro, relax. You know what I mean? Have a good time. Lu I don't want to say lust after your wife, but the thing is desire her. Go after your husband. And this is something that can change. And the last thing I'll say is commit it into prayer. Pray that God helps your intimacy level. That's one thing that will always work is prayer, okay? Uh, so when you bring things into, into, into the presence of God and you pray over it, God will act and work on your behalf. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Knock, it will be open. Ask, and it will be given to you. Amen? So come into prayer. Also, the Bible says, uh, uh, be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. So pray about that situation. Does that make sense? That's all I'm saying. So pray about it. And, 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 and get outside of yourself. It's not about you. It's about the other person. Okay? When you're not feeling the desire to want to be intimate, think about it from the perspective of what the Bible said. Don't deny your partner. Because when you deny your partner, you're giving room to Satan. And don't give room to Satan. Satan just needs a little bit to mess everything up. Okay? Don't give room to, the sa to Satan. And don't deny your partner. And remember, communicate communicate and make them feel loved okay you may not you may be really tired one day and say i'm tired but make sure the next day you initiate it okay that's all i gotta say let me know what you guys think share your thoughts below make sure to like and subscribe welcome to the family i see you when i see you it's your boy